My name is Greg Adams. I'm an air attack officer with the BC Wildfire Service, and we're here at uh, the Kamloops Air Tanker Base. So in my role, I ride around in the bird dog aircraft, and when we arrive at the fire, uh, coordinate with the ground crew uh, if they're on site to determine uh, how best to attack the fire from the air. So here we have Turbo Commander 690. It's uh, one of our bird dogs that we use. Within our fleet, uh, we have six of these, or six that are quite similar, uh, almost identical. This one uh, we, have, we have paired with the RJ85 air tankers. And the bird dog will always uh, fly out ahead of the air tankers just to assess the fire. And, um, the air attack officer inside will come up with a plan. And uh, once the tankers show up, uh, we'll be able to show them what we'd like them to do and uh, get the tankers to drop the return where we'd like it. Here we have the Air Tractor 802 Fire Boss. Uh, this one, unlike the retardant aircraft that we've looked at, is able to pick up water from a lake and, uh, and then deliver it out to the fire. When we do pick up the water, we typically inject a little bit of foam concentrate in there, and the foam concentrate just helps to make the water penetrate into the fuels a little bit better so that we're actually wetting the forest fuels rather than the water just running off. Yeah, so we use these aircraft to put water directly on the fire take down some of the fire intensity, which allows the ground crews to get in to the fire, especially if it's burning too hot for them to get too close. So behind me we have the uh, RJ85 air tanker. Uh, it's one of the air tankers that we have in our fleet. Uh, it provides uh, land-based services, so uh, we fill up with retardant here at a tanker base, and then uh, the airplane will deliver the retardant out to a fire uh, okay, and so drop it where we need it. So the retardant is a, a chemical mixture that uh, the ingredient that makes the difference is ammonium polyphosphate and it reacts with the cellulose in the plant matter that we're dropping on. Uh, so when it gets heated up by the fire, a chemical reaction occurs that actually slows down the fire and reduces the intensity of the fire. So some of the challenges that we face when fighting the fire from the air, visibility, sometimes the smoke just uh, doesn't allow us to do what we would like to do. There's also uh, potentially congested airspace if we have too many aircraft in one small area. The terrain here in BC can also be an issue with uh, the mountains that we have. As beautiful as they are, sometimes they just don't let us fight the fire the way we'd like to. So sometimes we get asked the question, like, should we have more aircraft? And, and sometimes the answer is yes, and, and we do have the ability to bring on more aircraft through either agreements with other provinces or even other countries as well as uh, the companies that provide the aircraft to us typically have spare aircraft available that we can also hire to add on to our fleet. One of the other things that we need to consider is that uh, we can have a lot of aircraft resources, but if we don't have the ground resources to complement that, then uh, we can't actually do what we need to with, with the aircraft. So we do need to have ground firefighters and ground firefighting equipment out there quickly soon after we've uh, done the work in the air.